Okay, let's see conchoidal fracture in action. Now, if you are just doing a quick couple of blades that you're gonna break out really fast, you can just kneel down just like I'm doing right now. If you're getting into some very detailed stuff, you're gonna wanna take a seat on a log or something so that you can really brace um, the rock and really get a good accurate strike. So, in my left hand, I've got the good quality material rock. It's got a little bit of a cortex on it, which we're gonna knock away here. In my right hand, I have got my hammer stone and I'm going to find that curved part that I want to strike with and I'm going to put my finger right over it so that I can really guide it down accurately as I make contact. Now what you're going to want to do is break out a bunch of blades and uh, you're going to have to pick and choose which ones are good and which ones are bad. You're going to get good and bad ones out of the rocks that you break. But what we're going to do first off is we're going to pick where the ideal location is on this rock that we would like to have a blade come out of. Now, when you're looking at a rock, you wanna find um, a ridge, something like this. I know this is a little bit tough to see, and that is going to really allow the energy to travel well through the rock. So if you find your rock, that ridge, you're gonna to wanna to flip it over, and then you're going to want to strike somewhere in this zone. And when you come down with that conchoidal fracture, you're going to strike, you're going to follow through, and then that energy, just like the cone shape I showed you, coming straight down is going to knock the blade out of the back side of the rock. So if you're holding it down on your leg, you're going to whack it, and then you're going to remove this, and there's going to be a blade that has come off in that spot. So uh, the best way to do this is just start practicing. It's not all gonna make sense until you really start chipping out blades. Also, be aware that little shards of rock can fly off and uh, they can be very damaging if you get them in your eye. So if you're not wearing eye protection, blink on contact as you hit this rock. So I'm just gonna start chipping away a little bit here and we'll see what we get. Okay, here's our first little blade. And as you can see, it's uh, got a very, very sharp edge on it. I'm gonna break out a couple more and then we'll test these. Here's a close up look at the blades that I just broke out. As you can see, there are varying sizes and varying shapes and varying degrees of sharpness too. What you're gonna wanna do is grab all of them and just get a feel for what works. Okay, for our test, I'm simply going to carve a point onto the stick that I broke off a fallen tree. Uh, now, when you're using stone tools, you have to use them differently than you would a knife. Oftentimes when you use a knife, you push away in a carving motion, and the steel blade can really take that and handle it well. With a stone tool, you have to be a lot more gentle because the edge of this is very sharp and it's very prone to chipping and fracturing. So, what I like to do is brace in close. I hold the stick with one hand. I'm gonna hold the stone here, grabbing it with my thumb and forefinger, and I'm going to make slow slicing carving motions as I drag it along that wood. And you'll be pretty surprised at how well one of these little rocks will carve. And again, this is just a test. If you want to do something as in-depth as making a bow drill set, it's going to take you a lot of time and a lot of patience, but it certainly can be done. And as I mentioned before, it's a very good exercise because later on, when you go back to using a real modern tool like a knife, you are going to be much more effective at using it because you understand the properties of how things cut. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to narrow down to a point. My stone tool, a uh, couple parts of the edge have chipped out. So I'm gonna switch blades now. And I'm gonna find one that's a little sharper and a little fresher. The blade that I just chucked down will now make an excellent scraping tool. So you can take them all the way throughout using them for different things. This one's really doing a good job.
There we go. We've got a sharpened pointed stick, all from stone tools. By now, I hope that I've been able to show you how conchoidal fracture works and hopefully given you enough information so that you can break out your own stone blades just like the ones that I made in this video. Now, if you're looking for more information on this topic, just search the internet for flint napping. Flint napping is the entire art of making stone tools and there is a wealth of knowledge out there and a lot of experts that can help you along because we've only scratched the surface of this art during this short video. But my intention above all with this video was to enforce the ideal of doing with less and less equipment when you go out into the wilderness. This is because it gives you a more pure experience and it also increases your abilities as a woodsman. Because for example, when you build an entire bow drill set with a stone blade and then you do the same thing with a modern knife, making it with a modern knife becomes very, very easy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Paul Scheider from Hedgehog Leatherworks and I'll see you next time.